folks. This is the Nutty Knife Guy. And I'm not going to be testing or reviewing anything today. This is going to be more of a historical knife philosophy video. About a question that occurred, but it's kind of been niggling at the end of my consciousness for a long time. But really hit me when I acquired my Unite Lead Cutlery Combat Commander Sentry Trench Knife. Now, I've already reviewed this knife. Uh, I'll put a link to the uh, review below. But uh, It's not really about this particular knife. It's about knuckle duster trench knives in general. Uh, because they're iconic. They are a, a massive symbol of World War I. But the thing of it is, after World War I, these things never saw general use in a military organization again. And I've been wondering why that was. Now, on the face of it, it seems like a no-brainer for close combat. Brass knuckles attached to a blade. Right? Right? What's better? You can punch. You can use the skull crusher. You can slash. Great stuff, right? But after World War One, very limited use. And after World War Two, no these weren't issued at all from any military by any military as far as I can tell. And from what I understand, and I'll I'm gonna put some pictures up for this video, from what I understand, uh, it began with the Mark I trench knife in about 1916, 1918. And that was basically a triangular spike with a D guard or a knuckle duster. Uh, and it was pretty much only good for stabbing. You couldn't cut it off. And it left some, such horrendous wounds that they wound up outlining that kind of blade in uh, Geneva Conventions because it was so hard for surgeons to close that kind of a wound. And then the Mark I trench, um, excuse me, the 1918 style trench knife came along, I guess in two versions. So I guess it was 19, technically 1917, 1918 trench knife, I think. Uh, or the Mark II trench knife, I saw them called different things. But like I said, I'll put a picture up. And But this doesn't seem to be any scientific or methodical. Uh, selection process or development for this knife. It just seemed like a really good idea to put a knuckle duster on a knife. Uh, they were issued in uh, World War uh, One, of course. Uh, the Mark II came along and the first one, I guess, had crappy steel and it would break all the time. So the Mark II came along in 1918. Hope I'm getting all this right. And uh, was better, but when World War One ended, they had a whole bunch of these 1918 pattern trench knives uh, in stock when World War Two came along, and they were issued to basically special operations units before they were actually called that, Rangers, Airborne, Marine Raiders primarily. And for the most part, didn't like them. Some people liked the design of it, but most of them said that they were big, uh, they were clunky, and poorly balanced. And I can tell you from this, yeah, uh, having done some drills with this and practiced with that over the past couple of weeks, I do absolutely agree that this thing is crap for balance. Uh, and it's unavoidable, really, for a knuckle duster trench knife because this thing has to be heavy it has to be stout you've got to be able to punch people with it and crack the skull crusher and not have it break and in fact if you look at my review uh i did flatten out the skull crusher trying to crush a brick now granted not a fair test that's the re i go through that in the review but the point is these have to be the knuckle duster and the handle have to be very very tough and that usually means being very very heavy <laughs> But you have the knuckle duster trench knife. And after World War II, they're not used. 
and I answer, and I want to know why is that? And I think I just answered my own question. They're not very practical. It adds extra weight, and yes, you have the option of punching or using the skull crusher. But what I've discovered out at my war post when I was practicing with this thing and just playing around and just flipping it around with it while I was watching TV or whatnot, or doing making videos, is not only is it poorly balanced, but for slashing. But if you're in range to use the knuckle duster or the skull crusher, you're in range to use the blade. And it is a friggin' knife. If you can do that, you can do this. If you can do this and come across the head, you can do this and come across the throat or the neck. Right? And it's the same thing. Anytime you can use this or this, you can use the blade. So this becomes redundant. Now, in some of the reading I said that I guess the original intention of the knuckle duster so it wouldn't be easy to take the knife out of your hand and disarm you. And that was the reason they both had spikes on them. Again, I don't see how this would uh, be thought out, how this is thought out, how that would make you any easier or less likely to either, excuse me, it would make you less likely to be armed or uh, have a knife taken out of your hand. Now, you, this gives you good retention, sure, but I don't know about the spikes. And the thing with it is, it's only human nature. You got spikes on it. You got something like this under your arm, especially for the spikes. You're going to want to punch with it. But again, if you can do that, you can do this. You can punch him in the nose, or you can go and cut the lizard man zombie ninja's throat. And it's basically the same motion. So there is really no utility, in my opinion. To having this. Another complaint that came from the guys in World War II was the knuckle duster limited the way you could grip the knife, which for a fighting knife is a very, very bad thing. They said that basically the only way you could hold those is a straight up and down grip, and that really uh, limits the way you can thrust and slash if you have to hold it straight up and down your hand. The handshake grip or the saber grip are much handier. They're much more nimble and they're, you can go a lot more places with it. They're just more nimble. Now this knife doesn't have that problem because this the knuckle duster slot for your pinky here isn't enclosed by any metal or anything. So this is free to float and that allows the knife to be used in saber, this knife be used in saber and handshake grip. And it's actually not even too bad in reverse grip. But if you look at the pictures, and I'll put them up again, you'll see that the 1918 pattern trench knife is enclosed, which would just basically lock it in, lock you into the ice pick grip or the hammer grip, excuse me, the hammer grip, and that would be it. And I think that's another reason. It is one of those things that seem like a good idea. But once you try to practice the idea, you just find out that they are redundant. They add weight, and they don't really add any options that offset the extra weight. And as I said in my review of this one, because this one is so handle heavy, they didn't have a retention strap to keep it from doing this. When I wore this around, just in the process of reviewing it, this thing was slapping me in the leg. Or slapping the side of my thigh, depending on how I was wearing it. And I can't imagine that. That would be really annoying if you were on a forced march. And you had this thing bouncing up and down against you all the time. And just the added weight. Uh, you know, weight is the enemy of the infantry. You know, they're carrying 60, 70, sometimes 100 pounds on their back. They're carrying their, their primary weapon. They're carrying their ammunition. All the stuff they have to have. They're already weighted down with the weight of a small human being. And then you're going to add a lot of weight that doesn't really give you any more ability. It gives you options, but that's not necessarily a capability. Right? So after World War II, what did you see? This was replaced in the Army by the Mark III trench knife with no knuckle guard. It was replaced by the Marine Corps with the legendary K-Bar combat knife. 
No knuckleheads. There's you don't see knuckleheads anymore. They're popular with collectors. They are an iconic image from World War uh, One. Uh, a few years ago, I was in a gas station when I was going somewhere, and saw a biker wearing a, probably what was a replica, 1918 pattern trench knife, with his biker club colors. You know, and that was I tell you what, with that combination, that was quite fashionable. But for practical military use or police use, I don't know if they still use these or not. Uh, militaries just abandon them, and they're not. They're probably not going to come back. For the simple reason is, if you're going to do this, if you're going to use this thing, you can use. If you're enraged to use this, you're enraged to use the blade. And somebody uh, might say, well, maybe they just wanted to take prisoners and calm them with that. There are a lot better ways to take prisoners than, come, than smacking them in the face with this or cracking them in the head with this. Uh, it, it was just one of those things that I think America got into World War One. They weren't prepared. I mean, you can go back into history and find out how woefully unprepared we were for that war. Right? Okay, well, we're going to be doing trench warfare. We're gonna, our guys are going to need knives. And then somebody probably came up with the idea Hey, we'll put a, a knife on a pair of brass knuckles. Won't that be a, a great clo close quarter battle weapon? Well, really not so much. <laughs> so uh, that's just some rambling thoughts on uh, why these things aren't used by military organizations anymore unless an, organ uh, an individual soldier wants to carry one. They're just not issued. And... They were tried and found wanting. Uh, so, there you have it, folks. This is the Nutty Knife Guy. Jolly Roger, my co-host, is still AWOL. I'm beginning to think of foul, I suspect foul play. Somebody stole my hat. Or hid it from me. Or I may have just lost it. But anyway, sooner or later he'll turn up. And the co-host will be back. So, until next week, remember to draw your knives only in just perfect, and sheathe them only in honor. Also remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. Please like, share, and subscribe if you think I deserve it, and I bid you goodbye.